Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarium X here. I'm a little late today, things have been crazy, but I am glad to be here. And in just a moment, I would like to unbox some things here. I'm pretty excited about it. So, without further ado, I'll get started. I'm assuming that, oh, some people are showing up now, that most people were thinking I was not going to do a live stream at all today which I would totally understand because it was a bit confusing, but Slav Pepe's in the house, squad up. Nice to see you here. And Bruno. Hey Bruno, how's it going? Welcome. I want to show you something that uh, Bugs in Cyberspace sent me. It was awesome. So Bugs in Cyberspace, I know a lot of you watch Peter at Bugs in Cyberspace. If you don't, you should check him out. He's got the website that he's had for well over 20 years and he's got a newer YouTube channel and he's also got um, a very big Instagram presence and you know he sells bugs and knows a lot about bugs and does some really cool stuff so if you haven't checked out Peter Bugs in Cyberspace you should I suggest you do at least and I'm going to show you these stick stickers that he sent me Jay's Crazy Obsessions hello Thomas Sinclair Evan Barb, Family Pet Adventure. So, two things that he sent me. One is this sticker of an orchid mantis, which I think is awesome. He's got the orchid mantis on his business card, and he's got this sticker of an orchid mantis, which I think is awesome. That is one I would like to keep sometime. And then, um, Wonder Pet Chronicles, Why Not in Wyoming, and Thoropods. Hey, and this sticker as well. Blue Death Fanning Beetle. Love it. I'm trying to figure out the best place of honor for these stickers because I think they're awesome and I want to make sure I do them justice. Just look at the detail on this. Blue Death Fanning Beetle. Pretty cool, huh? So that was really nice of Peter at Bugs in Cyberspace to send me these. Um, if you haven't been in one of his contests, you should do it. Um, his generally Friday contests, you answer a question or a series of questions on his... Um, and his video post, his YouTube post, and then he'll send you a prize. Sometimes the prize is a gift certificate to his website. Sometimes it's stickers. It can be like invertebrate magazines, different things. So definitely worth checking out. So thank you again, Peter. And I am excited about that. Now, next. This is from Heather. And Heather is a subscriber and has been watching the channel for a while. She's got uh, Instagram too. She posts a lot of cool terrarium stuff. I think it's, I, I won't mess it up if I say it. it's like H. Jensen E or something like H. M. Jensen E. I should post it on the description. So we're going to, um, <laughs> Beetle got me bugged out. All right, Jordan, welcome. Nice to see you here. So what I would like to do is do a little bit of, okay, Family Pet Adventure. I hope, hope it works out for you that you're able to hear. I'm going to look at the bags here of the some plants, some terrarium plants that Heather sent me. She sent me a key as well, so I'm going to un, um, unbox and, and read through the key of all these, these terrarium plants. Okay, so this one must be a Fatsia. Yeah, this is a Fatsia japonica. I've heard, this, heard of this plant and seen it. It's a pretty cool plant. I know there's a hybrid of this plant with ivy, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and this one is the, the Japanese Fatsia. And I always thought this was a cool plant, but I've never had one. So that should be fun to grow. And this looks like a rhizome. And Heather's key here, it says it's Polygonatum biflorum, Solomon seal. So this is a plant I've also heard of, but I've never kept. It looks like We've got a rhizome here. You can see the like the root structure and there's a couple of shoots coming out, so that should be fun to play with as well. Once again, heard of that plant, never grown it. So that'll be fun. Thank you again uh, to Peter and Heather for sending me these cool things. Love it. So let's see what's in here. This is bag number two. So I'm not necessarily opening this in order. <laughs> But that's okay. I'm just seeing what I find. 
So this is thuidium, thuidium ecultulum or something like that. Hard to say, but very cool plant. Fern moss. Oh, look at that. Is this a kind of club moss? Or what is this? It reminds me a little bit of Selaginella. That is very cool. This one. And there's Dendrolycopodium obscurum, which is Princess Pine Tree Club Moss. Oh, sorry. This is the Princess Pine Tree Club Moss. And this, the rest of this is the Fern Moss. Whoa, that is some cool looking plant there. Check it out. I can see why they call it Fern Moss. Because it looks like a cross between a fern and a bryophyte. That is really cool. And I can see why this is called a princess pine tree club moss. It feels like pine needles almost. It's, it's a lot uh, pokier than selaginella, for example. Uh, so pretty cool. Very, very cool. So um, I am kind of missing out on the, the chat a little bit because I'm paying so much attention to the plant. So sorry, everybody, but... Um, Steph, Andrew, Dragonudo, Captain Obvious, Heather Jensen, these are your plants. Thank you so much for sending them. Horrific Dude, and Family Pet Adventure, Little Bob. Well, I'm glad to see you, Little Bob. It's good to see you. And I am staying bearded, at least, trying. So, um, Horrific Dude, I'm probably going to be putting, I have two terrariums that I need to replant, probably, or th maybe three, and be putting these. Spreading these among those. That's my plan anyway. What I would have liked to do if I had had more time is just do a live stream planting. But I don't know that I don't have enough time for that today. But I'll do something like that at some point. This is bag number four. These are unknown plants. Cool. But they're from the museum area. Oh, that's an interesting looking plant there. I can't focus on it. But there's one with a plenty of root ball there. So that's cool. I don't know what that is. It looks like there's maybe two different plants in there. So that'll be fun to play with. And then, okay, let's see. I've got a few more plastic bags in here. Oh, look at that. That is a very cool looking plant. There's two of them in there. This is bag number one, okay. Whoa, just stepped on bubble wrap, sorry. Don't wanna scare anybody. Okay, bag number one, we have some blues. So we have, this must be Scandapsis pictus exotica. This one here. Very cool kind of blue-green metallic looking to, to that plant. And this little one. Gudiera pubescens rattlesnake terrestrial orchid. I'm going to pull that out and get a closer look at that. That's very cool. Check that out. I love that, that, uh, what would you call that? A reticulation pattern on the leaves. Very cool. So that'll be fun to play with. And there's some Pilea glauca in there. I love Pilea of various sorts. I've never worked with this one before, so that'll be fun. Pilea cadieri I've worked with and Pilea depressa, I think, but I've never played with this one, so that'll be fun. To play with and yeah I love little ground cover plants with tiny little leaves I have a weakness for those if I could I'd grow you know ground cover like that all over the place I probably ought to, will do more of it and horrific dude in the answer to your question yes I have I had an ant colony for about three years and it was pretty cool it's been a long time uh, that was when I started growing that that must have been about 20 years ago. And so I had it from about 20 years ago to, to 17 years ago-ish. And it was cool. I collected the queens, collected several queens just after their nuptial flight. And uh, put, I think, three queens together. And I did a plastic box with holes drilled in it with test tubes attached to it with a plastic tubing. And uh, cotton and water, you know, the, that style of, of ant farm. And... Uh, they did well. One queen killed the others soon after, you know, they, they got going. Uh, and I guess that's normal for some species. They'll team up and then one queen will kill the others. Kind of brutal, but that's how it works. Nature in the raw, so to speak. And then she 
you know, went on to found a successful colony, which I had for several years. So it was cool. I might do that again at some point. Not my wife's favorite bug. I have to admit that, but uh, still very cool. And this is a Korean rock fern, which I really, really like. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of ferns. And uh, Heather said, got to pay attention to the zigzag patterns in the fronds here. So look at that. That is really cool. Uh, okay, let's see. Cool. Oh, you listened to my Wallstat interview twice. Nice. Small ground cover plant look like radish sprouts. They kind of do. Ground cover with teeny leaves. You love elf and thyme. I have seen that and have been tempted to buy it. Make a little... Uh, fairy garden or something. Is there someone you would say is the Diana Wallstead of bioactive terrestrial tanks? Good question. You know, I'm not sure, but I would say that whoever that is, or if it's a group of people, probably in the dart frog hobby. Because that's really where bioactive terraria got started, I would say. And uh, that's probably where it is, but I, I'm not sure who that is. Um, as a person, on a personal level, who that would be, but it's probably someone in the dart frog hobby. Now, let's take a look at the paper bag. This is fun. I got to check this out. This is a spineless Opuntia cactus. Basically, it's a pricky, prickly pear cactus without the prickles. So does that make it just a pear cactus? I don't know. But she so said this one is called Opuntia Cucinifera sunburst variegated prickly pear, which is so cool because I've always loved prickly pears, but I don't love the glochids, which are the tiny spines around the big spines that get caught in your fingers and stuff. You can avoid the big spines if you're careful, but the little glochids are really hard to avoid. Looks like this one doesn't have a single one, which is awesome. So I'm pretty excited about that. And it's probably too tall for my beetle tank that I have now, but I might be able to put it in my 20 gallon um, beetle tank. So, um, when I reactivate that one. So that's exciting. That's super cool. So, once again, thanks to Heather. And thanks to Peter for making this, uh, today's video, a lot more interesting. That's awesome. I just saw one of my velvet ants that you... But I thought I'd just... Uh, keeps disappearing um, okay so Serpa design is certainly up there although I would say that he is, does some amazing stuff but I think of Diana Wallstead as sort of the founder of you know her method of tanks the dirted tanks and Serpa design does some amazing things but there were people doing dart frog vivariums of that style before he's around not to say anything wrong about what he does he does some innovative stuff just saying he learned some of that stuff from the dart frog people Moombas, hello, and thanks for coming in, Thoropods, LMT, first worm day of the year. Everybody's hiding. No, there's some beetles over here. Look how many, oh, my rough death fanning beetle's out, being followed closely by a, a smooth death fanning beetle. Kind of fun. I love how they both have some shades of blue in them. It's not the same as the blue death fanning beetles. Not the same species. This one isn't even the same genus. This is Cryptoglossum muricata. And it's been more active lately, which is cool. Um, so, cool. And you just call it a pair. Yellow variegation. That'll be fun to play with. This will, this will be a really fun cactus. Thank you again. Salvo Smith. Hello. Where did you source velvet ants? Well, one of these came from Bugs in Cyberspace. He's... He's got them. Not right now because they're out of season. But there she is. There she is. This is my Dazimutilla Vestita. Collected her locally. Uh, you can find several species of Dazimutilla in my area. I love this one. She's got kind of a lighter orange color to her and she always, her abdomen is always going up and down when she's walking around. But she is super shy. My other velvet ant that's in here 
You can see I need to take some dried carrots out. They don't hurt anything, but they look kind of unsightly in there. Um, is a lot larger and is Dazimutila klugai. She's usually really active. I see her running around all the time. I'm not sure why she's not out right now. Might just be a little early, I guess. But it's cool that my Cryptoglossum muricata, my rough death fainting beetle, is out doing its thing. So, um, and I do have blue death fainting beetles in here as well, of course. And Did I reconnect? I lost it for a minute, but I, th I think we're back. Um, okay. Okay, where did you get velvet ants? I'd love to get some here in California. You can actually catch velvet ants in California uh, pretty readily. Go out into the, the desert and look. Um, you can probably find some this time of year if you're in Southern California. If you're not, go along um, hiking trails where the, the soil has been kind of compacted. Try early in the morning before, say, 9 in the morning, between 6 and 9 in the morning. Or try at night between 6 and 10 p.m. along hiking trails. You can usually find some. They're fast, though. So be prepared for that. And uh, let's see. Oh, a tiny pad in the bag as well as for the Opuntia. It was on top of it. may have broken off. Okay, cool. I will check that out. Oh, I see it. I see the tiny pad. So I'll try rooting. Maybe I could just grow a little tiny pad in with the, the desert beetles and then just prune it like bonsai. It. That might be kind of fun. Captain Obvious. Do you think I could put a cactus in a tank with desert insects like beetles, millipedes, or scorpions? Well, there's one of my blue death fainters right there. Um, you know, I think some people do. I would be a little worried about doing that just because those spines, you know, even with a beetle with a hard skeleton. Oh, I scared the blue death fainting beetles running off. Sorry. Some of them are pretty shy. I, I probably wouldn't do it with the spiny cactus, but with the spineless cactus or other succulents, I'd do it for sure. And I hope you do get some uh, Wonder Pet Chronicles. That would be awesome. Get some beetles. They're fun. I'm sorry they're not acting as active as they usually do uh, at this time of day. They're usually going nuts. I don't know if I just scared them or what. Family Pet Adventures starting a project to combine some surface techniques and the walls to add tank to create a dual ecosystem. We ran some garter snakes creating what I hope to be a shoreline. Cool. Yeah, as long as you can get an area that stays really dry for them so they can dry off completely. I think you've got some really, really cool thing going on there. And Miraculous Illustrated. It's been a long time. Yeah, good to see you. So, horrific dude. Wants to get some Velvet Ants too. And of course, just want to make sure, just in case anyone in the stream doesn't know about this, Velvet Ants have a nasty sting, so be careful when you're catching them. I'm sure you, you know that, but uh, they're, they've got a sting on them. So... What are water? I unboxed a couple of things. I unboxed some stickers from Bugs in Cyberspace, a blue death feigning beetle sticker and an orchid menace sticker. And then I unboxed all kinds of plants from Heather. She sent me, Heather Jensen, sent me some various kinds of ferns. I got a spineless opuntia cactus, got some pothos. I got some, let's see, Solomon seal and fatia, pilea, all kinds of plants that I'm going to try to plant up in couple of vivariums I'm redoing. So, very excited to, to play around with that. This is one of those vivariums. She sent me this snake plant, which is doing well. You can see it's got gecko foot attached to it. She also sent me this Chinese evergreen, which is doing really well. And uh, there's not a whole lot else going on. There are a couple of other plants in this vivarium. Long line classifieds, as is. Kept the substrate in there. I thought, I'll try the substrate. Someone else was using it. I'll see what I can do with it. Didn't really like it. Some of the plants did really well in it, some did not. So I'm going to need to replant it uh, and use the plants that I already have in there that are doing well, but also add some more. Oh, there's my velvet ant again, one of them. But where's my other velvet ant? Seriously, she's always, she's like super active. She's more reddish. But all velvet ants are super cool. I'm hoping, I'm going to take a couple of my state this later on in the spring and uh, hope to catch a couple more. So, excited about that. Um, so, let's see. Baguette. Have you ever thought about making a flower beetle bioactive? I never have, although I do want to keep some flower beetles at some point, but I have to get a permit for, for them in my area, apparently. So, I'm working on that. I've, I've applied for it. I guess it didn't work for Captain Obvious with flower beetles, huh? 
And Seamus, yeah, two times in a row, not bad at all. Especially since this was a late one, so that's kind of funny. Um, so, Heather Jensen, I tried to get you a variety of things with fun textures and colors that you don't see in the hobby, but work in Vivaria. And I think you did a great job at that, because a lot of this stuff is very uncommon. I was just thinking, yeah, these are, these are awesome plants for Vivaria. And you can't just go to your local plant part, portion of the Home Depot or even a greenhouse necessarily and find all these. We have some pretty cool greenhouses around here. Uh, we've got a couple in this state that are really big. One is, I think, the biggest one in the like three-state area or something like that. I don't remember what exactly it is. It's huge. But there are some of these plants that, you know, they have gigantic greenhouses. They're full of plants, and I haven't seen some of these there. So I think you did a great job. Horrific dude. Have you seen Coyote Peterson's video when he gets stung by a velvet ant? I've seen the thumbnail for it. I haven't clicked on it. I have seen a couple of his videos, but I haven't looked at that one. I... I don't know how I feel about that particular video. Uh, I'm going to reserve judgment though because I haven't seen it. But I, mean, I know they're painful. I know they're super painful. I was stung as a kid, not when I was ever keeping any as pets, but I picked one up randomly when I was about 10 years old and got stung because I was messing with it. Didn't know what I was doing and that hurt. But as an adult, keeping velvet and as pets, I've never been stung. So. And Jay's crazy obsession. I'm glad. Oh, nice shot of this velvet ant. Too bad we have glare. Because she's looking pretty sweet. She's a pretty gorgeous ant. Well, pretty gorgeous velvet ant in my opinion. I love the way she always does this little dance. Those with others. I think that's, that's one of the great things about our hobbies. I think we try to do that to some extent. And many of us do. And I think it's a great thing. I'm glad that you're doing it, Heather. I'm a very... very uh, Lucky recipient of that generosity. Yeah, that is one thing that bothers me to say. I'm going to go pick up this bug and bother it until it stings me. Uh, that's, that's kind of another thing. Like I said, I'm going to reserve judgment, but it's, I, it's not something I, I do specifically. And Miraculous Illustrator, have you ever had a mantis? My local reptile, we just started selling some recently, so I'm thinking about getting one. I've had a few species, well, a couple species of mantis. Raised a couple from really tiny babies. In fact, last summer, and I think I made, no, did I? Well, I posted some on my Instagram about it. Um, I raised, uh, we had an Utheka given to us by some friends last July, and it hatched next day. And we raised up a few of the babies. And let's see, I think we kept three. And then um, two of them made it to adulthood, or one of them made it to adulthood, one of them made it almost to adulthood. I think that's what it was. And it was pretty cool. One of them did make it to adulthood. And it was a, a male, I believe. And we kept it uh, into its adult life. And then I've also kept the Hyrodula mantis. I bought a giant golden mantis from Peter Bugs in Cyberspace. And raised that up from a tiny little baby. Like an L2, or maybe it was an L2. Until it was an adult and into its adulthood. So, they're pretty cool. Oh, so Mumbaz, uh, you are one of the people who bought isopods from me recently. Cool. Um, I can't tell from your name on YouTube which one you are, but that's pretty awesome. Did I send you some zebras and some peaches? Is that what I sent? Family pet adventure, isopod related question. Giant orange scabbers from Worm Man the other day, and about three days after I put them in my tank, they started walking around holding their front antenna. Whoa, seriously. I don't know if I've ever seen a whole bunch of isopods do that. That sounds bizarre to me. Has anybody else seen that before? Um, Captain Obvious has some mantids. And Beget, what animal would you want to keep most if permits weren't an issue? Good question. Um, if permits were absolutely not an issue and I could keep anything I wanted that I can't keep now without permits, um, probably either some of the crazy exotic beetles in other countries that are just amazing. Or, um, maybe, oh, where'd she go? She's all over the place. There's one of my big old Obscurus beetles, Eleodius Obscurus. I'd probably do some phasmids if I could, which are the stick insects. If I didn't have to worry about permits, some of the crazy phasmids that they have out there. Because there are some super cool ones. And... Um, 
they're really hard to keep if you don't have a permit, but uh, I'm, I may apply for a permit for some of those at some point. Let's see, Family Pit Adventure. They're, they look almost like they're walking drunk or blind. Have you ever seen a similar problem? I'm trying to remember if I've seen that. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, are you having any mold issues in there? Is the ventilation high enough? I'm curious. Okay, so Moombas, you're the one with the zebras and peaches. Awesome. Ghost mantises, marble mantises, and Chinese are the best beginners. So I've had Chinese. I've never had ghost, and I'm not sure. I never had marbled. I know I haven't had marbled, but I would love to keep um, ghost mantises. They're so cool. And horrific dude five will springtails breed if you keep them in a container with isopods. In general, yes, absolutely. They'll do really well in that situation. Benefits the isopods. Highly recommend that. Great way to keep, you know, double duty in the, the uh, enclosure, and it's good for both of them because the springtails thrive on the remains, the isopods leave behind, and the isopods do well because the springtails keep mold under control. So it's awesome. Match made in heaven, so to speak. Heather Jensen, who keep African millipedes or giant snails if I could. Those are two cool ones, too. Um, I would love to keep the giant African millipedes. And um, maybe someday, if I can get a permit for that, I'll do that. Uh, or the giant snails, like the Akatina snails. I used to live with those in Hawaii, saw them all the time. They're super cool, so I could totally see that. <laughs> Captain Obvious. Springtails go together with isopods like a bad day and rest streaming. Meaning, I think, that if I stream on your bad day, it will improve your bad day. I'm hoping that's what you mean. I just can't get enough of seeing this little, this little velvet ant. She's very cool. And so shy usually, so this is like the most I've seen of her in a week or two weeks or something. Seriously confused about why my beetles aren't doing, you know, why they aren't dancing around like crazy like they usually do. Here, I'm going to mute the camera for a second and see what else we can see over here. I'm just going to take a look. Oh, I'm going to sit on my phone apparently and try not to do that. Um, let's take a look at the Daphnia colony, see how it's doing. It's very algified on the walls. There are plenty of Daphnia doing their thing in here. Um, okay. And Gator. Yes, Coyote Peterson got stung by a velvet ant, although it was a bigger species than this, I believe, based on the thumbnail. And Heather Jensen, has anyone had super shy isopods? I just got Vulgari gem mix, and instead of just hiding, they all curl up into balls until no one is looking, which is pretty funny. Huh. I've never kept gem mix before. And let's go look at these guys, too. See how they're doing. Um, I know I just posted a video on them, but you can see a bunch of fry hanging around. If you look carefully, larger fry in that area. So just check that out for a moment. Um, I've had shy isopods. In general, when I get isopods at first, doesn't matter what they are, unless there's a huge number of them when I get them, they're kind of shy. That's not entirely true. I mean, Porcelia labus dairy cow is not shy, but almost all of them are kind of shy. And baguette, totally get that. They're like watching turtles walk, which is uh, inherently funny. Turtles walking is inherently funny. Blue death fanning bills walking, inter inherently funny. Can't really focus on those little ones, can I? Not working for whatever reason. That's too bad. Um, and my shells, these, I just buy these on Amazon. There's a really good, uh, seller. I think the company's Roland or something. You can get a bag of 36 of these for like 14, 15 bucks or something. And I have a link in the description of most of my multis videos to that seller. You can go straight there and get these. You can see I have about a hundred shells in here. So, um, I bought several of those, about three ish of those bags of, um, shells and it works really well uh, so that's where I get them Rochant hello small birds walking instead of flying always gets me yeah especially the when they the kind that have moved their head in a funny way and they're walking and Mumba's got a gym mix recently they don't seem too shy I wonder what that's about that's interesting 
different behavior, same species. Orange ice pods hide all day, even though there's probably 400 compared to my small gray ice pods. They're always out, even though there's only 12. I thought it would be the other way around. That is interesting. And I know for me, some certain species are very shy. Um, Tarragonas are very shy. Uh, Montenegro, Armadillidium klugai Mont Montenegro, super shy. Um, Magic Potion, super shy. So there's several pretty shy species out there. Uh, but it does depend on the number to some degree, too. But Porcelia labus dairy cow has got to be the shyest, I mean, the least shy type of ice pod I have ever encountered. And powder blues are up there, zebras are up there in terms of very bold ice pods, but Porcelia labus dairy cow takes the cake, at least so far. Well, I see we're just about out of time here. Thank you for chiming in, everybody. And thank you for uh, everything. I'm excited for uh, to plant up the plants Heather Jensen sent me. I'm excited about the stickers that Peter Bugs in Cyberspace sent me. And I'm really excited about some projects that are coming up. I've got an isopod unboxing coming up really soon. And I've got an unveiling of my releasing the garter snakes into my bioactive vivarium. It's coming up really soon. So excited about all those things. Plus some other projects uh, that are in the work. So thanks again for joining and I will catch you soon.